now Danny Manning shooting to give the Kansas Jayhawks their second national championship. Kansas has won it. The Kansas Jayhawks have beaten all odds. And Bedlam reigns here in Kansas City. As the Jayhawks beat the Sooners 83 to 79. Being a, a student back at KU in 1988 was just a fantastic experience and, and winning the championship in, in 88 was really the highlight of my time at KU. But you know as a basketball fan you realize not only was that a great KU story but it was really a great college basketball story in the 75 year history of the tournament it's one of the biggest upsets. When Coach Brown and Coach Manning met for the first time uh, at the SMU Tulsa game January 6th, that was a great opportunity for us to form a bit of a mini reunion, not only to go to the game and see uh, Danny Manning and Coach Brown, but to interview for the film. And it turned out to be a, a reunion that uh, was really unexpected. You can really see the chemistry and why they were able to overcome the obstacles they did in 88 to win a championship. The impact of that meeting was, was more significant on Coach Brown. I think he was quite emotional that weekend, not only about facing Danny Manning uh, on, on the coaching sidelines, um, and in the film we have him saying that he really preferred not to play Danny as a coach, but I think it was uh, really emotional and significant for Coach Brown to see all those guys together again. One of the things that was interesting about getting everybody together that weekend is the, the love and respect and, and inspiration that they still drive from Archie Marshall. So Archie's presence, he just has this charisma about him and you know, we were able to interview Archie and meet with him in Dallas and you know, his story was such a big part of that, that 85 through 88 run and I, I think we were you know, really humbled to meet Archie and to be able to retell that story. And in talking with all the other players, you know, they really reinforced what an important part of the, uh, he was to that team. And one of the things that Archie said that really stood out in my mind, he said that I don't feel like I was an inspiration to the team. I think they inspired me, you know, to continue to participate, to get better, uh, to put things in perspective. And so that was a great story. And we really wanted to, one of our goals in the documentary was to tell that Archie Marshall story. Well, certainly the rivalry with Duke was very strong in their mind. I think a lot of the players from the 88 team had experienced that, that loss in 86. So the Duke rivalry was pretty strong. Uh, they really talked a lot about the K-State and Oklahoma rivalry. The, the Oklahoma rivalry back then was, was really significant because Oklahoma was one of the best teams in the country. They were brash. They were arrogant. Um, and I think the players really built up a lot of animosity. The whole Big 8 did against OU and so that came out pretty significant and it, it was interesting because the football players that were brought over to the 88 team to fill out the, ba uh, the balance of the roster had been really kind of beaten up by the OU football team a few times so they had a lot of, of angst uh, and, and tension regarding OU but the K-State rivalry back then was fantastic. Um, you know, we played them four times that year, uh, and they broke our 55-game home streak. So I think the students uh, at KU and the players had a lot of respect for how good that program was. But I think the players really respected the K-State relationship, um, and they honored it in terms of the history of the two programs. But the real kind of sentiment and tension was with, regarding the OU rivalry that, that time period. They talked about Coach Brown's superstitions in general, um, and of course because they lost in 86 with the red, we certainly weren't wearing the red uniforms in the tournament in 88. Uh, but things like uh, Jimmy the bus driver, he felt like he was good luck, so brought him along to the Final Four. Uh, he started Jeff Gildner against Oklahoma State. Uh, we won. He thought, okay, I'm going to stick with that, you know, good luck, and then we kept going on a winning streak. Uh, the story that, that Scooter told us that Mark Turgeon was probably the best dressed uh, young assistant coach in the country because whenever we would lose in 87 and 88, Coach Brown would give Turgeon the tie and suit and not want to wear it again because he felt like it was bad luck. So we heard a lot of those stories and of course the red uniforms kind of get thrown into that. I think the, the players still really look back on 
that championship as a time where they really matured as men, they were matured as leaders, and they're all doing really well in, in their career and their lives, you know, they're family men, and some of them are still uh, very much involved in basketball. Uh, Milton and Kevin are, are both uh, obviously involved with the NBA, and Danny's a coach. Uh, Scooter just left uh, professional basketball just a few years ago. I think he retired when he was 40 years old. And so basketball and KU are still very, very important to them. And I think when they look back on that time, and it really came out in, in meeting with them, it was almost less about the basketball, and it was more about the character building, the leadership, the camaraderie, uh, overcoming the challenges that they had, and that really comes out. And I think they're very proud of that, and I think they feel like that that's what's you know, molded them into the, the men and the leaders that they are today.